God Almighty to have the privilege of being able to come to you one more time. We thank God for all of the, the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. And we pray that, that we will utilize the time that God gave us to cast a reflection of the goodness of God to the next generation that will come after us. We are only here for a season. And within that season, we pray and hope that we will find the connection with God that will allow us to pass on to the generation that comes after us the goodness of God. The psalmist say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, thou who does all things well, humbly we come to you now, thanking you for the blessings of this day and for the opportunities of life. We realize that if you had not been on our side, where would we be? Only your grace and mercy has sustained us, has kept us moving from one degree to the other. And we may not know what tomorrow holds, but blessed be God, we know who holds tomorrow. Teach us to trust you. Teach us to depend on you. That when the battle is over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. We pray now that you would steady our minds that we may hear what you are saying to your church, that we may come to the end of our journey. We can hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up. i make you ruler over many tis them. In the name of Jesus, we ask this blessing. In the name of Jesus, we pray for victory, to walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to read to our hearing the 90th Psalms, 90th Psalms. I'd like to, for us to consider all 17 of the stanzas. Psalms are not in verses, they're in stanzas. The Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or even ever, thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and say, Return, ye children of for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth, and groweth up in the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet in is there little strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off. And we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts 
unto wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long? And yet it repent thee concerning thy servant. O satisfy us early with thy mercy. That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil that thy work appear unto thy servant and thy glory unto their children and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish. Now, in this 90th Psalm was attributed to, to Moses. We, we remember Moses, God, dealt with him early on in the Bible. Matter of fact, the, the Pentateuch. The first five books of our Bible is attributed to, to the writings of Moses. God brought Moses out of his father's house to a land and made of Moses a great people. What God did for Moses and what God wants to do for each and every one of us. But all of it starts with our relationship with God. Moses understands that relationship. And, and later on in his life, as he grew a little older, he, he pins this. This 90th Psalm is considered one of the oldest Psalms in the Scripture. Moses had lived his entire life in the presence of, of Almighty God. He, some things he got right and some things he got wrong. But, but what he did, he grew in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, my brothers and sisters, when you found out that that God has brought you from a mighty long way, that that, that that's no no excuse for you to, to to treat others less than the way that you ought to treat them. You ought to be guilty of going back to to somebody along life's journey and letting them know. That I was not all that I should have been. But I'm glad that the Spirit of God is in my life to help me realize that I can be more than what I, I, I chose to be at that time. We ought to be guilty of going back to friends, loved ones, and acquaintances and, and letting them know that God has created us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in us. You see, one of the things about having a relationship with God is that you realize that there's some things that you did wrong and some things that you did right. And those things that you did wrong, you ought to be willing to go back and let somebody know. That God makes a difference in my, my life. Matter of fact, I'm somewhat leery about people who, who never can come to the place in their life when they realize that they have done less than what God would have them to do. And come back and say, I apologize. See, it doesn't take anything off of any of us to, to, to realize that that where we were in life is not where we are right now, but it does take consciousness of someone other than yourself to reach back 
let somebody know that God made a way for me out of no way. That God has been my bridge over the truck. That God has kept me all of the days of my life. And if I've done anything to offend, to offend you, forgive me. That doesn't mean necessarily they will accept what you have done, but you have done what is right and pleasing in the sight of God. And after all, when you do what's pleasing in the sight of God, God got a way of turning your midnight into midday. God's got a way of fighting your battles for you. God's got a way of making enemies leave you alone. In this 90th Psalm that is attributed to Moses, one of the oldest Psalms in, in Scripture, Moses reminds us the Lord, Thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. In other words, Moses recognized that he was just a creature of the moment. You see, I think that bothers a lot of us. We, we often say, I once was young, but now I'm older. But one of the attributes of growing older in relationship with God is that God knows how to, take, to turn your midnights into midday. God knows how to take things that that you may have meant for evil and, and in your older years show you that he can turn them for good. Moses recognizes this and he's, he said, Lord, thou hast been my dwelling place in all generations. When I was young, you was with me. When I was, was middle-aged, you was with me. Now, now that I'm all older, you were with me. And one of the things about growing in relationship with God, you should, you should not be the same place you were when you first, when you first met God. You should grow in your relationship with God. Matter of fact, your, your best relationship, your first relationship should be your relationship with God. You know, many of us are fortunate that God has given us good husbands, good wives, given us good mates, good friends, good family members. But let nothing come between you and your Savior. Whatever the situation is, whatever the circumstances may be in life, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Moses in this 90th Psalm says, Lord, thou hast been a dwelling place in all before the mountains were brought forth or Ever thou had formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Oh, one thing about God that's, that's, that's very different than we are. He's the same God yesterday. And he'll be here forevermore. That's why the instructions of God to every child of God is to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of being able to quote scripture, because Satan can quote scripture, but we are to grow in the grace and knowledge. We are to know. But God wants us to know and we ought to do what God wants us to do. I remember revivalists used to come and 
He used to sing a song. No hear it anymore. Straighten me, Lord. Please straighten me, Lord. You know when I'm right, Lord. You know when I'm wrong. You know where I go. You know where I belong. You know what I do. You know all my, my secrets, too. Just take me. Mold me. Shape me. Through and through. We, we ought to, 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 to present ourselves to, to God and ask God to have his way in our lives. And every day, we ought to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our struggles. Hear, hear. Our faintest cry. He asked. Moses didn't, didn't realize all these things that, that God has made obvious to you and I, but Moses realized that he had the ear of the compassionate God, that God had made a way for him throughout his life, that God had been his brief. And if you remember, Moses was not a perfect man, but he was a man who grew in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what God requires. That you learn of Him. And as you learn, it's, it's not just for you, but you ought to share some of what you learn with somebody else. Thou turn this man to destruction and say return ye children of men for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night David said I once was young but now I am older but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. There's some things that you learn as you walk with God. You learn that whatever life may present to you, you take it to Jesus in prayer. You tell him all about your struggles. Here's the promise. Hear, hear. You'll faint his cry. And if you wait on God, God has a way of turning your midnight into mid, into midday. When thou carriest them away, as with a the flood, they are as asleep. In the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning, it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening, it is cut down and it. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. None of us, I don't care how often you go to church, I don't care how much you pray, I don't care how much God uses you. None of us are all dead should be. All of us are growing by the grace and knowledge and those of us who have grown past the point where others are, we ought to reach back with the hand of compassion. And instead of trying to tear, tear somebody down to prove how big we are. We ought to move somebody the hand of compassion on up the king's highway. After all, you may not be able to to reach someone that you love, but if you reach out and touch somebody, they can do 
there's a song that I'm reminded of that I can help somebody. As I pass on, it doesn't take much to tear somebody down. It doesn't take much to correct someone. It doesn't take much to, to, to let somebody know that they're traveling wrong. But if you can help somebody. As you pass along, if you can cheer somebody with a word or with a song, if you can show somebody that he's traveling wrong in your living shall not be in vain. Moses writes this. It's not his song. Moses, the, 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 the author of the first five books of, of, of the Bible, Moses, leaves a testimony of what God has done in his life, what God has meant to him, what he means to God. We can talk, we can talk all kinds of but it's not what you talk, it's what you walk. You have to let somebody know that great is he that's in me than he that is in, in the world. For all the days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a table that is told. God has been good to us. God has opened doors for us. God has made enemies leave us alone. God fought our battles for us. Backs up against the wall. We couldn't see our way. God made a way. Every now and then, every once in a while, we ought to be guilty of helping somebody else to know I did not make it by myself. But the same God that made a way for me, He'll make a way for you. All score. The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score, yet is their strength labor and so for it is soon cut off. We live our lives in such a way that God can use us. Some of us live hundred years. And we consider it a blessing to live a hundred years. But it could be that God allowed us to live a hundred years so that we can make up in our mind that without God we are nothing. With God all things are possible. And when you make up in your mind that, that, that God is the way, don't, don't you keep that to yourself. for the Lord who was on my side where where would I be who knows the power of that? according to thy fear so so, so is thy wrath so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto David says it this way, I once was young, but now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed. You, you've got to let men and boys and girls know that without God we are nothing. With God all things are possible. You have to let them know that the inner on the inside that, that draws them to relationship with God can be satisfied as they put their hands in the hands of God 
walk on up the King's Highway. I, I, I don't know how long they'll be here, but I do know this. If they'll try Jesus, everything will be all right. David says, so teach us to number our days. I do not know how long it will be or what the future holds for me. But this I know. If Jesus will lead me, I shall get home someday. I don't know how long God has granted to you life. But my admonition is that you put your hands in God's hand. That, that you won't follow the directions of, of the mind of somebody else, but you'll follow the direction of the mind of God. In all the days of your life, you'll seek to, to glorify God. That while God gives you a chance, you let the world know that without God we are nothing but with God all things are, are possible. God stands at the door and he, he knocks. If any man will open the door, he will come in. He'll be their God and they'll be his people. David and this song reminds us that before he was ever born, God had a relationship with somebody else. And no need to be envious of the relationship that David had with, with God because God had a relationship. And here's the, here's the key. God will have a relationship with you if you will let him. If you will ask him to come in and create in me a, a clean heart, renew a right spirit in me. I don't know when, I don't know where. I do know that one day he'll call. And we got to answer. And on that day, it's not going to be about what you did and what you didn't do. He's going to ask you one question. Did you love me? And did you serve me? And on that day, you're going to go to God with clean hands and a pure heart. unto thy servant and thy glory unto their children. Don't know how long you, you've been here, but I hope that you have given God the glory because without God we are nothing. With God all things are possible. Let someone see God at work in you.